we are here today on Human Rights Day in solidarity as Grassroots Global Justice Alliance and the U.S. delegation of It Takes Roots Frontlines Communities to show you we are watching and to call out the U.S. to stop the proliferation of poverty, patriarchy, pollution, and war. We come to you inspired. We offer up a sacrifice. So please pour out your spirit. As we open up inside, fill us up, fill us up, fill us up, fill us up. Today is International Human Rights Day. But how do I take the climate agreement seriously? when they give a free pass to the United States military, the biggest polluters in the world, and the biggest violators of the human rights today. When I first arrived to Iraq, I saw children 10 years old playing with glow sticks and garbage cans, and I see these children living in buildings that have been bombed, missing ceilings and walls, riddled with bullet holes. They grew up enduring occupations and bombing because they were born in a place with oil. Those children could have been me. Those children who played in garbage because we destroyed their sewage infrastructure. While oil fields are protected by people with guns. As a little brown kid, I too played in the streets with makeshift toys, innocent and unable to change the circumstances of my birth, escaping reality with imagination. The same circumstances exist in my home country, the Philippines. U.S. military occupying land and defending extractive economies while destroying the lives of our future. How can I continue to contribute to this system that destroys the planet and separates me from my brothers in humanity? I've seen pollution from billions of bullet casings, generators and diesel engines, depleted uranium and white phosphorus causing cancer and birth defects, and contaminating the water. How can we solve climate change without challenging the biggest polluters and destroyers of this earth? We must challenge them. Extractive economies and climate change are only possible when protected by guns and militarism. Only possible with violent police equipment, deadly security contractors, and local militaries and paramilitaries trained by U.S. forces with U.S. money. The same racism that seeks to erase indigenous communities is the racism that drives militarism and the wars in the Middle East. Militarism and extractive economies need each other. One cannot exist without the other. No war! No war means! Spill the people's economy! No war! No war means! Build the people's economy. No war. No warming. Build the people's economy. No war. No warming. Build the people's economy. Coal mining is one of the extractive economies in the U.S. and the world over that has caused us to be where we are in terms of climate change. With coal mining jobs on a steep decline, our elected officials have proposed a federal prison as economic development. Our just transition cannot be built on the backs of other communities, but instead must be built with those communities. We know that the wealth was built off our labor and from stolen lands. Not only does that need to stop, but there must be reparations made to the peoples affected by global pillaging. We suffer from coal development, oil and gas development, fracking, and uranium mining. In a very rural area, we are surrounded by seven coal-fired power plants and have the same air quality standards as Denver which is a huge city. We have high rates of cancer, high rates of asthma and respiratory illnesses, developmental diseases, so people in their big fancy cities can live a lavish life. They have the comfortableness to travel around, eat whatever food they want at any time of year, jump in a pool in the middle of the desert. Indigenous peoples all over the United States and Canada and all over the world suffer the same thing just so other people can be comfortable. The only way we can reduce carbon emissions is to keep fossil fuels in the ground. And in order to do that, you need to support us indigenous peoples at the front lines of coal development, oil and gas development, 
all over the United States, Canada, and the world to protect our homelands, to defend, protect, and renew our homelands. We're doing it for ourselves, but we're doing it for all of you too. I am an American mestizo working in a frontline community impacted by colonialism and environmental degradation. I am angry and frustrated with U.S. leadership and their inability to act on solutions brought forth by women in America who are fighting in the front lines of communities impacted by climate change. Young women of color make up the majority of people in the United States, yet U.S. leaders do not represent women. They hinder women's ability to have autonomy over our lives, our bodies, and our livelihoods. And we cannot have climate justice without women's justice. We had a problem with housing. We had to march against the state to take over houses that was unoccupied, but the city and the state of Buffalo, New York owned them. We have 60% unemployment within the inner city. We fought to, against national fuel gas, which had, is the largest uh, fossil fuel company in New York State. People was freezing in the winter. Our gas bills, are uh, over $250 a month. A woman froze to death. That's what caused us to march against national fuel gas. We won a $10 million uh, lawsuit against them. And we took that... We took that money to weatherize houses. Within reach. 
And local communities like ours are already developing strategies and solutions to address climate change in our communities. As the head takes roots to weather the storm delegation, we call on President Obama to make binding commitments in response to both science and the demands of frontline communities. First, to establish mandatory, not voluntary emission cuts at the source. We also call on President Obama to leave fossil fuels in the ground, reject fracking, nuclear power, carbon markets, and other dangerous technologies and false solutions. Yeah. That's right! Yeah. Call on Obama to support community-rooted solutions, including regional and e local economic structures that support the production of renewable energy. Being on the front lines of the crisis not only means that we are bearing the brunt of the impacts, it also means that we have a clearer view of what's coming and what lies ahead. We best know the scope of the climate crisis and are working towards real and realizable solutions. We join with the movements from around the world and we demand justice for the people and the planet. Si se puede! Si se puede!